Good morning and welcome to Westside Baptist Church. This is Sunday School on August 21st, and we are in session five talking about loving our neighbors. And this week we are learning about forgiving your neighbor. And the scripture that we're using comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verses 21 through 35. Love leads us to forgive. And it is not always easy to forgive. And if we don't, we can have a bitter spirit. And as time goes by, then those bitter spirits can resurface and cause us more problems. We must remember the depth of God's forgiveness. And he has given that to us. So he forgave us through his son and the work that his son did on the cross. And because he did, we are to follow him and forgive others. It is one of the great healers in any, any type of relationship. Matthew was a Jew and he was a tax collector. Now, because of his Jewish background, he wrote from that point of view. He even gave all of the lineage about Jesus all the way back. Uh, all of his Jewish uh, heritage about the Lord. He was the Son of God the son of David, the son of Abraham. He was the Messiah, our Savior. And he wanted to make sure that the Jews, and of course us, he wanted to make sure that we understand that Jesus was greater than all of the Old Testament prophets, the priests, and the kings. And he wanted us to be like him. So let us pray. Our Lord and God, we thank you for your example the way that you love, the way that you forgive. Lord, help us to learn how to be more like you. As we look at your word, we ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, to lead us and guide us to understand the way that you want us to forgive, and I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. So, Peter was, I guess you would say, he was the pseudo-leader of the disciples, and Matthew wrote about him 
five times things that were different. Uh, Peter walked on the water there in Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 through 31. Peter wanted to know more about a parable that Jesus was sharing in chapter 15, verse 15. Peter said, after the Lord asked who he was, he said, thou art the Christ. That's the answer that he gave in chapter 16, verses 17 through 19. Other tax collectors asked Peter, did our Lord pay the annual tax? It was called the temple tax, and that was in verse in uh, chapter 17, verses 24 and 25. And then we're going to look into the fifth one, and that was when Peter asked the Lord, how many times should we forgive our brother? And in Matthew 18, chapter 21 and 22, it says this. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but seventy times seven. Matthew wanted to stress how important it was to learn how to forgive, to live a humble life, as servants and then the disciples they were discussing who was the greatest or who would be the greatest when they got to heaven well what did Jesus say he said the one that will be servant of all. And then he also talked about being focused on how to forgive and how to restore each other in the church and also in just everyday fellowship. And he wanted them to know how to handle, how to restore each other. So here was Peter wanting to know how many times he should forgive his brother. Or maybe he was looking just for the low number of times. You see the Jews Had a, had, had a rule, Amos talked about it, where God would forgive the fourth time when someone sinned against him. And so the rule was you should only forgive three times. And uh, we read about that in Amos 1.3, uh, 
verse 6, verse 9, verse 11, verse 13, chapter 2, verse 1, verse 4, and verse 6. And the thinking was that if it went to the fourth time that whoever it was didn't really want to repent. So that's why Peter thought he would double it and he would say seven. But what did Jesus say? He said 70 times 7. That's 490 times. Well, he was just saying that you should show mercy and don't, you know, try to keep track of all of it. Just forgive. So, Jesus was actually speaking hypothetically. He says that we should forgive time after time after time. And that we should be more merciful than we ever thought that we should be. And he wanted his servants to, to think the same way that he does. Uh, be free with your forgiveness and have it come from the heart. He goes on to tell about a parable. And that's in verses 23 through 27. And it says this, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. For as much as he had not to pay, his Lord, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and his children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshiped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord or the king of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. So the king wanted to be generous, just like God is with us. And Jesus was explaining to them how to forgive. So here was a servant that that had taken a loan from the king. And so the king wanted his money back. He wanted to earn some money on this loan. So here is what he said that the man didn't have 
anything to pay back. And so the king said, uh, that he should be sold, he should be put in prison, his wife and his children should be sold and everything that he had. So what did the servant do? He fell on his knees and he said, be patient and I'll pay you back. Well, as it turns out, that was an impossible thing for him to do. The man owed 10,000 talents, and that was a weight of the coins that were used in that time and it could be either gold, silver or even copper and and one just one talent was worth 20 years of work at that time it would be at that time 6,000 silver coins and someone who worked what you would call a normal job could earn only one denarii per day. And so it would take him 200,000 years to pay that debt. So, you know, there was no way that he could he could pay that debt. One talent that represented 20 years of work. Therefore, to, to pay off the 10,000 talents would take him 200,000 years. So there was no way that he could pay that back. In the ancient cultures, when they couldn't pay their debts, a lot of people were sold as a slave. Or they were put into prison and they hoped that their family their fathers, mothers, brothers, and sisters, and all that had enough money uh, to redeem them out of prison. So that was what was going to happen to him and his family and everything else. He couldn't pay this back, but he said, have patience with me and I'll pay it back. It wasn't going to happen. So he fell on his knees, he begged, and he bargained with the king. And because of what he said and what he did, the king had compassion on him and he forgave him of the debt. Now, the king could have done anything that he wanted with this. But he had compassion. He was deeply moved. 
and he forgave the debt. Not only the debt, but the money that he would have earned from our Lord or from the king. So, this loan wound up to cost this man zero. But it cost the king who made the loan everything. And that's what God did for us. We could not pay our sin debt. But God was deeply moved. He had compassion and he sent his son, who also was deeply moved and was willing to shed his, his blood and redeem us. So it is a free gift to us. We can't do anything to save ourselves. It is a free gift of God so that we can be saved. So now let's see what happens after this. In verses 28 through 35, it, it says this, and we see what happened to this servant that was free of his debt and was able to be with his family and live in his home and have everything that he had in the past. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not. But he went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord, the king there, all that was done. Then his Lord, after that, he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou had desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. So God expects us to forgive even as he has forgiven us. That's why our Lord told this, this parable to Peter about forgiving those who have, have wronged us. He told this parable because he wanted us to know how important it was to forgive our brothers and our sisters when they have sinned against us. So, 
at first the king, he demanded that he be paid. And uh, the servant that was freed of his debt did the same thing. He went to one of his, his fellow servants. The amount that was owed from his fellow servant was very small, very small. And what did he do? He grabbed him by the throat and said, give me my hundred pence, which is hardly anything. The man didn't have it. And so he had him thrown into prison. The king, he forgave. He was moved to compassion. And the fellow servant that was freed from the debt used violence uh, to get his money back. The man that owed the hundred, the hundred pence, he could pay it back in a few months. But the servant who owed the 10,000, he owed the 10,000 talents, could have never paid it back. The king, he responded with forgiveness. He erased the debt and what he could have earned from it. But the other man, he, he was determined to get his money. But the other servants of the king saw what happened and went to the king and, and they told him what was going on. And of course the king you know, called him right away uh, for the second time. And what did he say? He called him evil. He, he was called wicked. And had him put in prison. He was tormented. He was tortured. So we need to show that deep compassion. We need to learn to forgive and not just say it, but say it from our hearts. Paul wrote that uh, we should be ye kind one to another, uh, tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake forgave us. Ephesians 4.32. That should be one of our hallmarks. So how do we do this? We need to seek God's forgiveness we need to confess any and all sin to God and ask his forgiveness. And we can do that through 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all 
unrighteousness. And then if we have wronged our neighbors or the ones in our church, we should ask for their forgiveness because we have hurt them or offended them. And then, of course, offer forgiveness to those who may have hurt us and ask God for the best way to solve these issues or these problems. So let us look at God's word, learn about it, and then do it. Let's pray. Our Lord and God, thank you for forgiving us and setting us free from a debt that we could never pay. Help us to forgive others in the same way that you forgave us, Lord. We ask for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. May we learn how to deal with people so we don't hurt them. Lord, let us be the kind of witness that you want us to be. And I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Guide, and our Advocate. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen.